uh, 2, and I'm going to be looking at verse 41 and 42. And really, we could read all of that, but I'm going to jump down to verse 46 because it's simply these two verses that really gets me started and is really that which details what I want to talk about today. Acts chapter 2, the book of Acts, uh, beginning at verse 41, 42, and then uh, skipping down to verse 46. Everybody have it? All right, here we go. Acts 2, 41. And they that gladly received his word, that is Peter's, were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now notice this. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And verse 46. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, I want to preach today on fun, food, and fellowship. <laughs> okay. Fun, food, and fellowship. I thought especially that immediately following our service here this morning, we're going to be having our uh, Christmas uh, dinner together and our Christmas party. So uh, what better passage of scripture and what better thing to talk about? Fun, food, and fellowship. You know, a lot of times when we use that phrase or we use those words, whether all three of them a couple of them or even one of them a lot of times we are doing so because we are announcing or we are promoting we are advertising an upcoming event in which uh, you know we want as many people uh, to come that possibly will and and can come and so we will put on the flyers we will put it in the announcements that there's going to be lots of fun, food, and fellowship. Yeah. And really, I mean, who doesn't like fun? I'd rather have fun than be in misery any day. That's yeah, right. Come on now. I don't think we have to say how much we enjoy food. I think that goes without saying. Uh, maybe it goes with showing more than saying. Uh, but we all like good food. And we like good Christian, a sweet fellowship in the Lord. But you know what? When we talk about these three words, to the early church and that is what we're talking about and I kind of gave the intro of where we are but for the early church these words and these activities they were not just a sales pitch they were not just a promo to try to get people to come but you can see that it was such in integral and important activities for their spiritual survival. Especially when you see the climate in which the church was born in. I mean, you can see maybe uh, fun, food, and fellowship uh, when everything is going good and everything is festive and jolly and so on and so forth. But, but we see that the early church was birthed in severe persecution and where they had to fear for their lives every day and, and things that were going on and so to the early church of fun, food and fellowship is something that was very 
important to them. And uh, that's why that you're going to see not only did they practice it on a regular basis, uh, but they preserved it, they promoted it, and they protected it as well. And so in their minds, these activities were not electives. You remember when you were in high school or you were in college and there were certain courses that were referred to as electives. In other words, uh, you got to choose. You got to elect whether you wanted to take that course or not. It's, it's your preference, but it really didn't mean a whole lot to the large scheme of things. You needed so many electives, but, but, but it was up to you. So whether you chose that or whether you did that, it really didn't matter a whole lot. But then there were other subjects that were the core subjects. And if you wanted to accomplish that which you were striving for, that it was utmost necessity you had to take those courses. And so that's why that, that they saw it as so important because of what they were striving to achieve. And that is they wanted to survive in this hostile world in which the church was born into and they wanted to be the best that they could be for the Lord and they wanted to survive and they knew that all of that really depended upon and was and necessitated them having fun food and fellowship I want you to know notice in the scripture here of how these early Christians how they embraced these things and not only embrace them initially but how they practice them over the long haul as we go back to our text did you see it in verse 42 in fact if you go back to verse 41 the Bible says then uh, they that gladly receive the word and so how, how did they involve themselves in these activities? Gladly. Yes, man. That means with great delight and great joy. They were not forced to do it. They were not coerced to do it. But they wanted to do it. And they, they had a good time doing it. And they knew how important it was. And then notice uh, in verse 42 uh, how that this verb and these adverbs describing their activity and they continued steadfastly so they not only engaged in these things gladly but they did so continually and they did so steadfastly nothing is going to get them off course nothing is going to get them uh, to deter them from what is going on and what they are doing and so when you look at that, it sounds like to me that for the early church, fun, food, and fellowship was serious business. It was something to fight for. It was something to maintain and, and, and retain. Yes. And so today that I want to want to pull these principles out of this passage. And I think that not only for the early church, but as we hear at the end of 2020 and uh, really uh, up on the threshold of 2021, uh, I think we as the modern church uh, that we need to understand how important fun, food, and fellowship together, how important that is. Right. You know, we're too busy for anything. Yeah. It's true. But notice the early church. I mean, they were going to defend these things. They were going to continue in them steadfastly and gladly. They wanted to do everything because they knew if they didn't, they would soon disperse from one another and soon there would be no church. Right. Yes. Right. So true. 
Now, as we look at these principles, I'm going to look at them in the reversed sequence in which I mentioned them, fun, food, and fellowship, because that's the way that they're mentioned in this passage. And so the first thing I want to talk about is fellowship. Did you see it there in verse 42? And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Fellowship. Fellowship was so important for the early church. And you can understand why it was so important when you understand what true Christian fellowship means. Paul speaks in Corinthians about fellowship in the Spirit. You see, we as Christians, we don't just get together. But when we get together, it is the Spirit that is there amongst us, that that connects us and draws us close to one another. Uh, so it's, it's, it's more than just... Just a gathering uh, where people show up. Uh, but it is true fellowship in the Spirit. And, and, the, and the word fellowship here and in many other places in the Word of God, it speaks of a partnership with and a sharing in. Now think about that. So the fellowship they had was a partnership or a partnering with and it was a sharing in. But yeah, anyway, you slice it, it means getting together with one another. It means that you're not staying at home. It, it, it means that you're not just trying to make your way, navigate your Christian experience all by yourself. Uh, but you, you come together with a body of Christ uh, and you come together uh, to share with. So it means that, that whether on an individual basis that you sidle up to another brother or sister in the Lord or you come together with your a local body of Christ and there you part with what they are trying to accomplish and you share in what they are going through. Yes, amen. So you can see then why why this this fellowship was was so important. You see, the early church, they understood this principle even way before the Apostle Paul made it famous as he wrote to the Corinthians. And what I'm referring about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and, and 21 and 22, but even the previous verses leading up to that, uh, Paul talks about, he said, we as a church, and, and not only the church, worldwide. Of course, that's true too. But you and I that are a part of First Mascuda Assembly of God. That, that we as individuals here that he says that there is one body, but there are many members. Yes. Right. So he likens the body of Christ to the physical body. Right. And you see, sometimes we, we, we may look at certain members of, of the body, and I'm talking about the physical body, and we say, well, they're more important. Some are less significant. Some are less important. Uh, they don't mean as much. I mean, you know, your heart's important, your lungs important, your brain's important, so on and so forth. But really, your pinky and your little toe and and uh, some of the other, they were really, I mean, are, are they really all that, that important? But, but as Thomas said, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Amen. We're designed by Almighty yes. God. Yes. And everything has a purpose. And, and as Paul says, that each member is important. Yes. And he uh, notice what he says there. Let me go back there to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. And I did not mind. Market. So I have to find it here quickly. First Corinthians chapter twelve. 
uh, that's Romans, and I don't want Romans, 1 Corinthians, sorry, 1 Corinthians 12, 21, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I, I don't have any need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I, I don't need you. Nay, much more, Paul says, those members of the body which seem to me more feeble or insignificant, they are necessary. Mm, that's right. So you see, church, each and every one of us here, what Paul was saying, we need each other. Yes, I need you, yes. and you need me. Yes. So, so it, 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 it doesn't matter in your own mind of how you consider yourself and other individuals. Paul said, we're all important, and that's why that that fellowship is so important. Now, now you see that the early church, this sharing in and this partnering with, that they wanted to do it as they practice their faith. Because the word fellowship is used here in verse 42. And it seems like this is when they gathered together and they had church. Because the Bible talks about the apostles not. Doctrine. That's where they heard the preaching and the teaching. And that's where they studied the word of God. And then the Bible talks about them breaking the bread, which in this case, speaking of communion, they had uh, 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 the communion service of uh, the representation of the body of Jesus and the blood. And then the Bible talks about prayer. So you see that they, they wanted to come together. They wanted to partner together as they worship God. They wanted to share in their singing. And uh, you know the, the word of the Lord, the study as we do on Wednesday night and here on Sunday morning. They wanted to gather together in those times because of what it meant to them. Yes. And so, you know, when, when I see how important this was, they did it gladly. They continued steadfastly. Nothing is going to keep them from this. Then in today, when I see individuals that claim uh, to be Christians, but you never see them in the house of the Lord. You never see them in fellowship with the body of Christ. Yes. That's right. Yes. You think something is amiss here. Something is wrong here. Something is not as it should be here. And you see the church, the reason that that it's so important and then you'll see as we've read in uh, verse 46 it was not only in the practicing of their faith but but uh, the Bible said that they got together from home home to home yeah, right. They didn't have a church. They didn't have a, a fellowship hall. They didn't have gymnasium. They, they, they didn't have any of that. There were no church buildings. And so they, they just enjoyed getting together one another uh, in their individual houses. Yes. And so you can see that we've lost a lot. Right. Right. in the day in which we live with, yes. with fellowship. But they understood that it was more than just getting together and that we need one another. But you see, when you get together, that's we derive strength one from the other. Yes. We get courage and we get confidence and we get faith from one another. Yes. And, and just being in the presence and rubbing shoulders with that it's a, it's a glory thing. It's something that, that God intended, that God ordained, that we were never ever meant unless it was of necessity that we navigate our Christian experience and relationship with the Lord alone. Right. So, it's to be together. Yes. It's to be in fellowship. Yes. It's to be as such. One of the greatest illustrations of us needing one another in the fellowship, sharing with and or sharing in and partnering with 
one another is a wise man in, in Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 through 12, here the wise man, he appeals to common sense of why we have fellowship. Why we get together. And he just starts out, states there in verse 9, uh, that two are better than one. And then he appeals to very, very simple illustrations that is common in everyday life of why this is true. He said the reason that two are better than one because of, of work. If two are working together, you can accomplish twice as much together than what you can with one individual by themselves. Right. Boy, that's that's deep, isn't it? <laughs> Not only work, but walking. He said, if one of you falls down, and I can't get up. I can't get up. <laughs> Somebody's there to help you up. He talks about warmth. Right. You get out there and you're stranded and you're lost in the wilderness and you can't build a fire. What's the best thing you can do? Cuddle up to each other. Because you can stay warm together than what you can separated on your own. He goes on and he talks about wrangling or wrestling or warfare. If an individual comes against you and begins to prevail, uh, begins to overtake you, if you got somebody there to help you, then you will prevail over them. And he said a threefold cord is not easily broken. Yes. We know how a rope is. A rope, uh, uh, you know, is not just one twine, but there's several twines, and even those several twines are made of little uh, several twines of that. But you wrap them together, one can be easily broken. You put two together, uh, they have twice the strength, but if you put three together, they have three times the strength. Uh, you know, once again, it's very common. But, but even then, the wise man is saying, we need each other. Yes. And if you separate yourself from the body of Christ without sharing in and partaking with, you will not last. Yes. It's true, true. Amen. Man, I you could preach all morning on fellowship, but I want to get to the food. <laughs> fellowship. Now, eating food is meant to share. Yeah, it's true. Well, I didn't get any amens, but yeah. uh, I guess you guys uh, that are married, you eat uh, separately then. No. <laughs> no. And what is it about when individuals lose a loved one that has been their partner and love interest, their soulmate for life, and then one of them passes? Yes. Sometimes you have a hard time getting them to eat. They don't want to eat. Eat has lost all of its enjoyment. You just eat to sustain life, but there's more to eating. And God that meant it to be more than just sustaining of life. Couple, well, I guess about a month ago, Ryan and Shantae and the older kids, Jenison and Madison, were going to a youth conference. And so Shantae asked Cynthia if she would come up and take care of the two younger kids, Judah and Emby. And so she was up there for three days and two nights. I come home from work or I come in from the office and usually I come home and man I smell something that's cooking and something that's ready to eat and it just you know brings joy to your heart but I come in there's no lights on there's no smell 
And yes, yeah, she put some stuff in the fridge for me. But you know what? When you're by yourself, you just... I just fix myself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And that's what I did. And you just sit down and you gobble it up and... You know, because there's no togetherness there. So there's almost something spiritual that God, and I don't have the time to get into it, but there's almost something spiritual about eating together. It reaches a whole new dimension when you do it with somebody else. Cynthia and I were out eating the other day and, and we comment, I guess because of our age. <laughs> I said, did you notice how many people are eating by themselves? Now, how sad that is. Have you noticed in the Word of God and in, 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 in these two verses, the Bible does refer to eating as eating, partaking of food as eating. Because in verse 46 it says they ate their meat. Yes. Now that just doesn't mean they were carnivores and they ate meat, which they did of course, but uh, it, it, it means they ate their meals. But did you notice in verse 42 it says they broke bread? And then in verse 46 it says... They continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. So many occasions the word of God refers to eating as breaking bread. Now why, why, why would that be? We see the implications is if you're eating a piece of bread by yourself, there's no need to break it and to share it with somebody else. There's no need to break it if you're eating alone. But there's something special and something spiritual about taking that which is yours and saying, I'm going to break it and I'm going to share it with you. Amen. Yes. And you do the same yes. with me. Now, of course, sometimes breaking a bread, as it does in verse 42, it means celebrating Holy Communion. Taking the uh, example of Jesus. Remember, he was the Last Supper that he was celebrating on the night in which he was betrayed by Judas. You remember, the Bible said that as he instituted the Eucharist, the Holy Communion that we celebrate periodically of the juice representing the blood and the bread representing the body of Christ. But you remember what Jesus did? The Bible said when they, had, uh, they were there that he took took bread and what did he do he blessed it but then what did he do next he broke it why because he was sharing with his disciples and so here in 42 it, it's very obvious that in these other spiritual activities such as the preaching of the word of the Lord, the doctrine, such as praying, such as the fellowship of coming together, that the breaking of bread here is speaking about that they came together, they would break bread and they would celebrate Holy Communion. Yes. But breaking a bread simply means sharing a meal together as well because that's in verse 46. Yes. They, they, they broke bread, the Bible said, from house to house. Come on over. Yeah. We'll eat together. Mm -hmm. Right? So church eating together is a very special event. Yes. It, it unites. And, and when I say there's something special and spiritual about it, just like the physical body needs food for sustenance and strength, and when you partake of that food, it gives you energy and, and you're able to live. Yes. Just as important as eating food is to the physical body, eating food 
glued together in the spiritual body is very important as well. And so it was more than just sharing with those that were less fortunate. But you see, here's the idea of breaking bread, why it's so special. Because of the attitudes it promotes, because of, of the spirit in which it promotes. Um, and, and we're going to have a bread breaking service one of these days. I don't know if you've ever had a bread breaking service. But we're going to have a bread breaking service. That's not where you eat together. But it's and it's not communion, but it's a bread breaking service. Yeah. But you'll notice here that what is so special about it is when you break the bread and you give and you share with someone else what you're saying, what is mine is thine. Mm -hmm. Amen. It destroys the spirit of I keep it for myself. It's mine. No, this is the body of Christ. So there's one last thing here. Fellowship, food, and fun. Amen. Amen. Fun. Yes. yes. You say, really? Do you think the early church had fun? Yes. <laughs> and you know what? As I think we could, we need a little more fun. Amen. You know, sometimes I come in on Sunday mornings and <laughs> we're, we're here to worship the Lord. I got joy down in my heart. <laughs> A little more fun. Yes. Did you notice back in verse 46, if we can turn back there to our, our passage, that the Bible says that they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, fellowshipping, eating, and did eat their meat. But how did they eat and fellowship together? With gladness. With gladness. Yes. Ha! <laughs> And singleness of heart. Yes. They did so with gladness. They did so with great delight. They did so with great joy. Amen. Amen. They did so with having fun together. Yes. Lord, yes. Praise God. <laughs> If you're not deriving much delight and much joy from what you're doing, you're not having fun. And if it doesn't show on your countenance, then I wonder how much it is deep inside. Because yes. the Bible says that from out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, but the Bible talks a lot about our countenance. That it reveals what's on the inside. Yes, it does. <laughs> so if you're not deriving much joy and much gladness from something, you're not having fun. Nope. I mean, there's times, you know, working. And I remember a couple years ago, maybe, yeah, a couple years ago now, adding on to a uh, clubhouse at a golf course. And the building was high, and we're adding on to that, so we had to take soffit out. So I, got, I was up there on a ladder with another guy, and we were tearing the old soffit so we could attach the new part onto that and, and the roof line and all of that. And the soffit is that which is underneath, and, and you know, you pull it down, you're under it, and the birds have got into it, and everything else, when you pull it down, dirt! <laughs> just blows all over you. <laughs> and I probably was murmuring and complaining as I did it. And some of the other guys on the ground would kind of jostle you and say, Rich, you having fun yet? <laughs> yeah. 
No. <laughs> Gladness and joy is what brings that happiness and what brings the fun. I'm going to close here, but, but when, I, when I talk about fun, you see, I, there's a lot more I could get into in the spiritual realm here. I'm not talking about frivolous irresponsibility. I'm not talking about going through life and not taking anything seriously. Obviously, that's not what the early church, when it says that they had fun together. But what I'm referring to is that where you get a temporary reprieve from the heartaches and the headaches and the pressures of life where you're able to get away and you're able to, to put your mind in neutral. Right. And you're able to escape from the demands of life for a little while. And you're just able to laugh and live and love. Yes, amen. Jesus talked to his disciples about getting away from the fray together. Just relaxing and having fun. Amen. Right. Right. Old Vance Havner, a Baptist minister of days gone by, he'd say, if we as Christians don't come apart periodically, we'll just flat out come apart. And so now with schedules and working and we don't have time for God and we don't have time for church, we don't have time for one another. Folks, we're on a dangerous path. The early church knew what they were doing. They knew how important it was. And they wanted to do it with each other. I got to quit, but when the Bible says here in verse 46, and they broke bread with gladness, great joy, and singleness of heart. Literally, it's, it's basically the only place it's used this way in the Word of God. But singleness of heart, it literally means without stones. It means without rocks. It means smooth. So when they got together, the reason they had so much fun, there was, there was no sharp rocks sticking up. There was no edginess. Mm, that's good. There's no cantankerousness. Boy, one thing I hate is when you're going to have a special service and you're going to have fun and somebody comes in the mully grubs and they're grouchy and they're cantankerous and they just ruin it for everybody else. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll spend a little longer on that then. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. But they got together smoothly. Praise God. They weren't fighting. They weren't bickering. There's no sharpness in their voice or in their actions. They were truly happy and glad to be with each other. And, 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 and it just went smoothly and without a hitch. Praise God. So here's Rich Goldeyes in paraphrase of verse 46. So they got together and had their Christmas dinner with great joy. 
happiness with lots of fun. Amen. And there was just sweet, sweet fellowship one with the other. And sweet fellowship among them without edginess, crankiness, jealousy, or criticism. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> In that atmosphere, you can have fun. Yes, you can. You can be refreshed and restored and renewed, Amen. which we need to be. Yes. And when you're renewed and restored and refreshed, you can go back to the daily grinds of life, but you have a renewed dedication, a renewed consecration, a renewed determination, a renewed uh, concentration. Yes, yes. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So, I'm going to close here. We're going downstairs and we're going to have fun, fun. fun. food, fun. and fellowship. Amen. 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 And so a lot of people say, is that really biblical? Man, not only is it biblical. And the early church, you'll see in the midst of what all they went through, they not only survived, they thrived. Why? Because I believe a large determining factor of that is they knew how important fun is food, and fellowship was with one another. Father, I thank you this morning. I, I give you the praise. I give you the glory. And Lord, as we do go downstairs, just, just give us a good time in the Lord. And Father, that I pray that just by being and chatting one with the other, that there's encouragement there. That Lord, uh, my, my brothers and my sisters, the reason I like to converse and, and share in with them what they're going through and what I'm going through and partner with them in what they're striving to accomplish and likewise in my life is because Lord, they have different experiences. They, God, you've done things in their lives that I need done in my life right now. And so by hearing their stories and, and, and gaining their strength from them, it encourages me to go on. So Lord, I thank you for this body of Christ. I thank you for my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I thank you, Lord, that today, that at this very special season of the year, that we have come together. And Lord, we want to have fun, and we want to have food, and we want to have fellowship. But Lord, that which is in the Holy Spirit, because God, that's, that's really what fun is all about, is in the Spirit. That's... That's what fellowship is all about in the Holy Spirit. That's what food is all about, sharing it in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So God bless us and help us. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and we'll give you the glory. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen.